So uh, ring gapping today. Uh, done the first ring just now. So uh, got my block on the desk. Got the piston there, feeler gauge, rings, other pistons. And then got my uh, grinding wheel, manual grinding wheel. So I'll show you. This is where I've just put this ring in. This is the top ring. And I'll show you with my 030 millimeter. Uh, so my clearance now is bang on 30. So I'll do the next one and show you that. Okay, and again, this is uh, cylinder number three, and this is with a, see if I can get that light up, with a 30 in there. You can see that fits in there nice and snug. That's two, two done. Just need to spin the block round and do the other side. So hopefully you can see inside this bore here, if I get my next, my next ring. I'm keeping the, uh, the N, I don't know if you'll see that for next, because the focus is locked, but the top of the uh, top ring, uh, see the beveled edge here, so it's got a little N on it, and I'm using that side to shave small amounts off to make it fit. So let's put it in the bore, actually before we do that, let's oil up the bore a little bit. And now let's get the ring in there. Let's see what size it is. So I've got my piston here to line it up. Use this as my stop where I want the ring to sit when I measure it. So I'll just do this consistently all the way around the block and then they're all the same. So I feel a gauge, I'm aiming for a 0 0.30 uh, millimeter. So this one Almost there, just a little bit, it's a little bit off. So I'll do, show you on the ring filer. So I'll just place it on the ring filer, line it up, put it against the beveled plastic uh, support. I don't know if you can see this, but if I join these together, you'll see that that's pretty much bang on. So they're batting together parallel. So let's put these in, shave a little bit off. And then we'll clean that up. Just take a tad more off. And then we'll put this back in again and check the clearance. So end facing towards me. just to make sure there's nothing loose on there and we can check that these are butting together properly again try a bit more there I'll just give the edge a little clean up and then that there as you can see so I've just got to do this last one and then onto the second ring so um, I've done three of these already but I'll just show you how I'm putting the rings in to the piston so I'll take the uh, piston pin out and then what I've done here is I've lubricated the uh, grooves in the piston. Then now I start with my uh, oil expander ring. Just place that on. This is for the oil control ring at the bottom. It's the expander between the two oil control rings. So these are the two thinnest ones. So I'll put these in now. 
doesn't matter which way around these go um, as in this way or that way doesn't matter so let's just set this in these I'll do by hand because these are pretty easy right next one and we'll orientate these uh, like it says in the service manual before I put them in but um, yeah, it's unnecessary really so I'll just get this second o-ring in okay so second ring so this time use my ring expander so I just need to get this clear enough to get the back end in and then pull this wide there you go so that one and then the top ring with the, see both of these have the N again so this second ring has the N and this one has the N so the N goes upwards this top one's easier than the second one so that's that now so I've got some there's some oil in there so let's just make sure that's sitting happy and this second ring isn't there you go so now we've got to put in the, the piston pin circlip now these clips on these pistons normally you would have two little holes in it so you could put an instrument like this in and squeeze it so you could put this in and squeeze it shut to get it in the hole so this needs to go in this hole here stop the pin falling out but these are like super tough and you know these are made to make sure they don't come out and because of that they're really hard to get in uh, but I guess there's a bit of technique so this will be the fourth one I've done now and I've got a bit used to it but so what I've got to do is work out which way which way around the orientation of the piston needs to be before I put this first pin in that uh, circlip in because one must go in first on one side before you as you build the block up and then the other one goes in after the crank and pistons are all, all being put in the block so looking at the face of the piston these are the air intakes and these are the exhausts because they're smaller these are larger and also there's a dot on the inside of the piston to show top so if I just line this up to the block now so I can work out which way it is so this is piston uh, 4 so this goes in here and you can see that the larger valve uh, clearances at the top are the air intake so I know that this orientates up this way rather than the other way around so now uh, I've got to work out which side of the piston pin needs to have the circlip in it so it is not this side it's the other side on the inside of the block because you won't be able to get to that once it's all together so now I've got to get this in and it's a bitch so what I do is I keep the pin in place and stop the circlip falling inside the bore which has happened and now just place this in here and what you have to do let's just check it out right around no it's the other side so it's this side that needs it so what I'm going to do is just as I pull this piece down just to squeeze it together I'm also going to push the ring in so that it bites the edge and starts to work its way in so there it kind of gets halfway and then it rests and then the next piece I actually used a screwdriver last time so what I do here is I'm going to push it here to work this round and in but I'm going to pull this away from the metal because I don't want to scratch the edge of the piston with the edge of this clip so I pull this back so that I can get the work this ring in like that and then that just pops in now I've seen on um, 
other people's engine build videos how they use a once this goes into the block the clip this little clip for this side has to go in via the side of the block once the piston is already in the block to seal to seal this from popping out like this see that so this side now we've got the ring there so it stops and this won't walk out as the engine's running and smash the engine to pieces so when this goes in the block if i show you the block you can see that the piston goes in here and then you'll see that that hole there is for getting when the piston's sitting in that position that hole is to allow you to get the second clip in to keep the pin in so this little ring has to fit through this hole here and into the piston so it's quite hard to do that and so I've seen someone get a little bar kind of like the end of a kind of like one of these and then they put this inside it, put it through the hole in the block, and then they pop it from the inside out and it pops into the piston, which is a great, great idea. But uh, I think they machined that piece that they had themselves. So I might have to try and make something out of some piping or find another solution, but I'll deal with that later. So yeah, these pistons now are ready to uh, go into the block once the crank's in. So I'll just bag these up for the moment and put them in the box. Look how smooth that is. Look at that, so smooth. Clearance, so tight. All right. So that's the whole lot. All four of those pistons are ringed up, ready. Circlips on one side, pins are in. Um, now I just need to get the crank ready. Um, I need to split the block again after doing the gapping. And then, yeah, start putting it together. But first I need to put the uh, rods onto the crank and then drop it into the block and put the pistons in. And then that's it. Short block's pretty much done. Start putting all the plates on and yeah, cool. <laughs> 